salvation, but to witness to the world. So equip yourself with His Word and engage yourself to His Word. somewhat restless we are basically worried and concerned and so it's very important that we come together and have that assurance that hey we're all in this together and everything is going to be all right so at this time I want to encourage us and I want to invite us to bow our heads as we pray to begin this segment of our AY online let's bow our heads as we pray Father God, we are so grateful for your goodness towards us. We thank you, O oh God, for your love. Thank you, O oh God, for your protection throughout this past week. We thank you for this opportunity that we have here on AY Online. And we ask, O oh God, that you will work everything out. You would be with the technical team, O oh God. You would be with our guests this evening. And Father God, may everything that is done tonight be to your name's praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we ask that you would bless our viewers, O oh God, as they listen to us and as they engage with us, O oh God. And Father God, we pray that those who may be affected by the issue that tonight minister to them, O oh God, at the point. Hear our prayer, O oh God, and attend unto our cries, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. So welcome to April's AY Online. As I said to you, we're coming from you to you actually from remote locations. But we're very delighted to be here with you. So thank you so very much for being with us tonight. Welcome to all our online viewers. We don't have a live studio audience tonight because we're not in studio, but we're very much delighted to host AY Online. Our topic tonight: divorce part two. Yes, and we're dealing with broken homes and broken hearts divorce part two broken homes and broken hearts now to get us started with our ayA motto and pledge i want to invite jenna who is going to lead us in our ayA motto and pledge and thereafter we're going to go into directly our lest we forget feature after i introduce our guests don't forget our you are seeing it now feet. under the live Dream so pleated with our EYA motto and pledge. Be introduced to our guests and there are after into our. Be introduced to our guests and there are after into our. Let's not forget. So at this time we will have our EYA motto pledge. Start with the pledge. My generation. Then we we'll have our motto of Christ tells me, and now we will have then our we'll pledge. Have Present arms, loving the Lord Jesus. I promise to take an active part in the history of the church. I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel. The world. And now I will hand you back to Rennie. All right, guys. So we see there at this time we have, thank you so very much, Jenna. We want to look now at our Lest We Forget segment. So I'm introducing our guests. Uh, we have Sister Avian Joseph, attorney at law, veteran attorney at law. And we're so very happy and delighted to have her here with us this evening. Sister Avian is going to be sharing with us on the legal aspect. And she will share basically how do the courts make arrangements for the children of the marriage to ensure that, you know, they are as much as possible shielded from the effects of the divorce and that as much as possible life continues for them as normal. All right, so welcome, Sister Avian. We're so happy to have you. We also have with us Pastor Wayne Jeffrey, uh, our dear you director. Pastor Jeffrey, it's wonderful to have you. And Pastor Jeffrey, of course, will be sharing with us from that spiritual, pastoral aspect where, you know, how does the church support children of divorced couples? And what can the church do to ensure that we provide a safe space for the children of divorced couples? And then we have our very own school psychologist, Sister Carla Copeland Joseph, CCJ. All right, she's here with us this evening. And Sister Carla, of course, will be speaking on 
the psychological impact of divorce on the children and how parents could continue to work together so as to mitigate any adverse effects on the children with respect to the divorce. So that's our topic guys, divorce part two, broken homes, broken hearts. All right. So those are our guests. Thank you so very much for being with us this evening, guys. We're delighted to hear from you. And we really look forward to you sharing of your expertise with us. Thank you even for being patient with us as we worked out our technical issues. All right, everyone. So we want to have a look at our screen because we do have our Lest We Forget feature. All right. So take a look at the screen now. And some of these questions should look familiar to us because you just want to make sure you're on top of the ball and you're paying attention to what we're teaching you on AY Online. All right. So... We want to get right into our topic this evening. So I want to invite now Sister Avian Joseph. All right. Divorce part two. Broken homes, broken hearts. Let's get into our children. And so we hope that whatever that technical difficulty is that we're having will be able to sort it out. So let's explore Adventist news around the world. All right. So in our international news, guys, we have our 100 days of prayer. As we know, our GC youth department has called for us to have 100 days of prayer. And today we are on day eight, day eight. And today we are praying generally for for comfort to those who feel anxious because of the pandemic you know in the past few days we have prayed for those who have you know contracted the virus we have prayed for those who have lost loved ones because of the virus we pray for our doctors and our healthcare workers and this evening or today rather we prayed for those who are feeling anxious and this is all around the world guys so we know that many of us are a bit a bit perturbed by what is happening we're hearing all the news coming from social media from coming from the main media sources you know about what's happening how quickly the virus is spreading we're hearing about of course the deaths and we are getting worried some of us are fearful but i want to remind us tonight god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and so today we are going to pray for all of us who are feeling anxious about the disease and i want to remind you that bible promises you could be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god and guess what he promises that the peace of god will pass all understanding and will attend your hearts and minds all right so don't be anxious guys we continue to press on and persevere in prayer knowing that god is able and he will deliver us from this pandemic so our 100 days of prayer continue and then locally i want to bring to you your attention um correspondence from our dear president pastor leslie moses who sent out saying that we would continue to have programs together so that our local church would be able to connect and so tomorrow yes we have our sabbath service with special guest speaker dr abraham jules and that's going to be at 9 30 a.m via our live stream and then on sunday sabbath sunday afternoon rather we're going to have a panel discussion how to survive a family crisis and that's going to be at 6 p.m all right, so tomorrow from 9.30 a.m., we will be watching the live stream with Pastor Abraham Jules. And thereafter, we have our AY service at 5 p.m. And then we will have our yeah. panel discussion on Sunday afternoon from 6 p.m. So the church wants to encourage you to join with us as we congregate online. All right, while we're having difficulty meeting within the four walls, guys, we know it's five or less, all right? But we want to encourage you to stay at home, but to join us online as we worship God together. Hey, guys, the pandemic can't stop our worship, okay? We're going to praise God in spite of. All right, so that's our Adventist news coming from around the world at this time. And we want to get right back into our discussion here. Uh, with respect to divorce part two and we're going to look at broken homes and broken hearts so sister avian sister avian back with us can we now hear from sister avian in respect of how our courts how do our courts 
really address the issue of children when walking through the divorce when process. Now, we know the that divorce process, the divorce process is divorce traumatic. Process. At the end of the day, nobody gets married anticipating that they would get divorced. All right? And we would have explored that in part one. The fact that, yes, we don't plan for it. It may happen. We explored the grounds upon which the church would um, permit divorce and how the church treats with the issue of divorced parties being members of the church. All right? You would remember Pastor Jack shared with us quite extensively on that. All right? But today we're focusing on our children. What happens to our children? And so Sister Avian Joseph, experienced attorney at law, specializing in family law, is going to share with us. Sister Avian, can you tell us what arrangements does the court make when they are walking through the divorce process? What arrangements do they make for the children? Okay, we're still not hearing her. I'm not sure what's happening there. So we're asking our technical team. Um, Pastor Jeffrey, we'll explore. We'll let Pastor Jeffrey respond then, and we'll come back to Sister Avian. So can our technical team assist with Sister Avian? Uh, Pastor Jeffrey, now, so we have the children of the divorced couples, and they attend the church. And we would have explored on the last occasion how the church treats with the divorced couple and the fact that, you know, they are not able to hold office um, because, of course, you know, divorce, the church has certain parameters within which it recognizes the divorce. And so it is generally recommended that once you are divorced, that you demit office for a certain period of time and try to, you know, regularize yourself, your status, your emotions and that kind of thing. So can you please tell us, how does the church approach the issue of the children once the parties have been divorced? Pastor Jeffrey? As far as the children are concerned, when parties are divorced, the children are part of the family of God and they still have parents. Yes, the two individuals who have been divorced are still parents of the children. It means, therefore, that the church should not be children and probably choose sides, so to speak. But there should be a mutual understanding as far as God's love and the church is concerned. Let me state here as well that when it comes to children, when individuals get in the middle of parents and children, sometimes children feel as though they are being loved or someone will take their parents away from them. And this can cause real devastation and hurt and psychological damage to children. Therefore, when it comes to the church, each individual should be loved and treated as a brother or a sister. You should not be making comments to one party about the other. So to speak, there should be a level and each individual should be able to feel comfortable inside the church even though they are divorced. They should still have that mutual respect and understanding and love of God that they can speak to each other without anger and without probably hate, so to speak. All right. And I think what you're saying there is very important because, you know, I have heard already where, you know, when couples got divorced, you know, um, uh, members took sides right and we would have highlighted that on the last occasion you know members took sides and then you know when it came to things like having birthday parties for the children or pathfinder or adventure or potlucks you know um the children of the divorced family they were not invited or they you know whatever comments or remarks you know they always say you will know what church members feel about you by how their children react to you because a lot of people speak in front of their children and then their children kind of give you the cold shoulder and that happens to other children after you know their parents have become divorced you know that some comment or remark has been made in front of the children because you see they kind of ostracize the child of the divorced family and so i think what you said there is very important for the church not to choose sides and understand that the children 
are still children of the church and they need to be That's nurtured. Right. Yes, is that Pastor Jeffrey? Right. Yes. All right. I, I must... Now, can you can you say? Go ahead. Okay, I must say, Renee, that you are quite correct. Sometimes, if uh, these members uh, will, will, will part of, let's say, for instance, a city or some department in church, you will find where some people will favor these and, and, and this parent and they will not have interaction with other people. It takes a level of maturity, spiritual maturity, to understand what love and care is and how we should be dealing with each individual fairly. Because what takes place in a divorce has nothing really to do with the other church members. They are not the one feeling it. Therefore, other church members should not try to take sides of them, try to figure out what went wrong, and sometimes try to figure out what went wrong, and we are not helping. We just want to figure out what went wrong to find out people's business to yes. spread it instead of others, and really try to help the couple to, to, to make the children to be because the children are the ones who are most affected here. Remember, we are dealing with a we are dealing with adults. That's right. The marriage is not marriage is for adults. So therefore the children feel really depressed and sometimes they start acting out and doing certain things and people start beginning, beginning to say all manner of things about the children and they are not recognizing that the children are being affected really showing what they are feeling by what right. they actually do okay thank you so very much pastor that's so important and i i am being informed by our technical team that um, the issues with Sister Avian are a bit too much to resolve at this time. So I would want to share with on that issue. Um, I know for a fact that when the courts are going through the divorce process, first of all, you are not able to obtain your divorce absolute, your decree absolute, until such time as what we call the Session 47 Declaration is made. Now, the Section 47 declaration is basically that the court is satisfied that the arrangements for the children have been made to the best of the party's ability at that point in time. Now, what are the arrangements? Now, the arrangements basically are, I like to say they're threefold. Firstly, it addresses which parent has custody of the child. All right, so custody, care, and control. So that is the parent that the child would live with. All right, then secondly, obviously, if the child or children are going to live with one parent, the other parent must have access. Okay, so the second issue is access. What kind of access now would the parent who does not have custody have to the child or children? So whether it's every other weekend or Father's Day, um, alternate public holidays, um, half of school vacations, etc. The court will try to work out now some sort of schedule that is convenient to the parties to preserve as much as possible access by the children to the other parent who does not have custody. And finally, of course, maintenance. Ideally, both parents should contribute equally to the maintenance and upkeep of the children. All right, now that may not always be possible based on the income earning and um, capacity of a parent, but the court tries as far as possible to you know, make it equal and as fair as is possible. And so that party who is usually not in custody of the children makes monthly contributions towards the upkeep of the children and thereafter towards their acquisition of like their school books and that kind of thing. Now what you find happening is sometimes where there is acrimony between the parents as in they're not really getting along they can't see eye to eye we have the children being used as collateral damage all right so you find that where the parent without custody has not paid the maintenance 
the parent with custody says, oh, you don't want to pay the money? Well, you're not going to see your children. <laughs> you know. And that, of course, is not in the best interest of the children because at the end of the day, the children love both mommy and daddy. So I want to direct this question to Carla. Carla, can you please share with us um, do's and don'ts of parents who are divorced in respect of maintaining what is in the best interest of the child co-parenting for the welfare of the child can you share with us some tips do's and don'ts to parents do's and don'ts to parents sure thank you Renee and good night to everyone and happy Sabbath of course uh, in terms of do's and don'ts you know, different children deal with divorce differently. So for parents, I think that is definitely something that you want to do would be to treat your children as individuals. And as Rene mentioned before, your children are not pawns in a game of chess. This is life. And yes. while you want to recognize that you need to treat each child yes. as an individual, you also want to make sure that you are keeping the radar on for different behaviors that may occur as you go through this divorce process. So, you know, one of the things that parents need to remember right. is for a lot of the children who are going through divorce, that right. was the only life that they knew. The only life they knew would have been both parents together living under the same roof being able to access each parent whenever their parents were available to them so as a parent when you go through a divorce you do not want to put your children in the middle you do not want your to encourage your children to think that because your spouse may no longer want a relationship with you that they do not want a relationship with their child and that is a definite don't that, is that we do not want to happen we do not want children being stuck that in the middle correct. thinking that because of our parents encouraging the thought that if your father or your mother does not want me it's automatic that they do not want you or a relationship with you. So that's something that you always want to dispel in your home. And in terms of other things that we would want to do, you want to always give your children a good listening ear because when a child goes through a divorce, it is a very traumatic event. So of course, some children can rebound yes. a lot faster than others, but some children take yes. quite some time to process all of this and a lot of grieving is involved mm -hmm. so it, it children and and even spouses you know you go through a period of grief so there is that denial there is that anger there is that eventual acceptance for some and just like the grieving period where we would usually tell someone who has experienced the death we would usually say you know you take your time take your time and you yes. know as as you go through things may get better you want to encourage that with your children as well mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you have a very nice warm supportive environment for your children and you know as we were saying before you want to keep certain things on your radar so are you seeing a lot of big changes in your children are you seeing your children experiencing a lot of big emotions so their anger is flying mm -hmm. out of control they are you know yes doing taking a lot of risky behaviors you may find that yes. they're beginning to smoke or or you know just if they were a very studious um student you're seeing that they are no longer showing that interest that they used to in terms of their school you want to have these things on your radar and if it is um bubbling over or escaping your control this is the time when you would really want to seek yes. professional help for your children and seek professional help for yeah. yourself and it is okay 
sometimes you need some help getting over some hurdles in your life. So do not think that you have to go through a divorce alone. Do not think as children you have to experience a lot of these difficult emotions alone. And of course, I, I, I totally right. want to endorse um, Pastor Jeffrey when he said that, you know, right. they're our kids. So the kids in our churches, they're ours. They're our children. And even as a church, Amen. we want to make Amen. sure that we really extend our arms Amen. of support. Amen. Yes, yes. We want to extend our arms of support so that they can feel comfortable. They must not feel as if they have gone through a separation at home and they're going through a separation at church as well. We want to make sure that at least something as remains well. stable in their lives and in their environments as well thank you so very much carla i mean i really appreciate your response very comprehensive thank you so there, very we much do much see carla. some young people I mean, I acting out and as pastor jeffrey would have said um we look at them and we're like oh these delinquent children these troublemakers but that's really not what we want to do at that time we want to identify the roots of what has transpired and see how best we could offer them that support and that love and embrace them and work with them through the issues now pastor jeffrey we have a question and here from our live feed somebody is no, asking what about children who were holding positions in church like AY leader, deacons, lesson study teachers? When the parents are divorced, is there a consequence to these children? So you would we recall in our last segment when we did divorce, Pastor Jack would have highlighted that there generally is a period of time when it is recommended that the divorced parties um, demit office, particularly if it were a fault-based divorce. All right, so the party at fault should generally demit office and they are counseled back and rebaptized, etc. But is there a consequence to the children of the marriage? Um, do they also have to, you know, um, step down from office or anything of the sort? Can you share with us, please? Okay, again, I must say, according to Kala, children sometimes are just falling with game of chess. In a game of chess, or they are, they have become victims. The children of a child did nothing wrong. They did nothing wrong. They have no right to suffer the consequences of what has taken place. They stay in office and they were leaders or by treasurers or what. They continue to function normally as they should. And, and I must say here, a lot of support is needed for each including the divorced people because sometimes we find one party whether they, if they were right or wrong they want to leave church and look at the family church sometimes one of the worst things parents can do to children or to themselves when a divorce comes in place is to go right away soon after and find another partner and start courting and sometimes you are in a church one else who is who the boss you are certain right to be seen who the boss you are certain right to be seen around your children and children we should be strong to our children and children we should be strong to our children and children I said the child is the child. I said the child child. And one of the next. Child. And one of the next. Child. And the trust of the children. And trust of the children. And the children. And the children. Sorry, Pastor. Pastor Jeffrey, thank you so very much for sharing there. You were a bit muffled to the end, but I am understanding what you're saying as far as possible is that we need to maintain some sort of stability and status quo, some sort of consistency for the children. And it is not required um 
by the church that the children demit office right so thank you very much for clarifying we trust that uh that is a response that uh, whoever asked the question that you were able to be satisfied by that response now i want us to take a pause at this time and we would go to an item of special music now guys we have something very special in store for you now i'm sure that you've been looking at the internet and you've been seeing that there there's this he's got the whole world in his hand challenge well, hey, we decided on AOI Online that we will also accept the He's Got the Whole World in His Hand Challenge. And thus, we have compiled some of our SDA young people, our music ministers, and they have accepted the call to compile a video for you. And so coming to you at this time is our version of He's Got the Whole World in His Hand, the challenge. So please sit back and enjoy our special music at this time. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the healthcare worker in his hand. He's got the government leaders in his hands. He's got the government leaders in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the doctors and the nurses in his hands. Scott's got the itty bitty baby in his hands. He's got whole world in his hands. He's got the essential workers in his hands. He's got families in quarantine in his hands. He's got families in quarantine in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands, he's got the whole wide world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. God's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, we just believe it. He got the whole globe in his hands. Uh, we develop a bit of antagonism. I don't want this person around my children and you know Can you share with us um, tips to the, yes. the couple that is, you know, how do they? Make the entrance of somebody new an easy transition into the whole dynamic Okay, so this is a very very touchy and delicate subject because usually when we talk about getting into the home life of individuals you know you always have to take so many different things into consideration but when we are talking about life after divorce once there are children involved definitely co-parenting is first things first and you know in our local context in our trinidadian um, parochial language we like to see children in naxa come here so any drama right. that is happening between parents, it needs to remain there. So we were saying before that your children must not be used as pawns, they must not be in the middle of drama between you yes. and your spouse. So when we're talking about co-parenting, when there is conflict, 
that conflict is going to increase distress in children and you do not want that so if there is conflict and and i, I want to right. see by extension just like within your marriage when there is conflict the appropriate time to address that conflict is not in front of your children so when you're entering okay. a marriage okay. union or when you're in a marriage union and children are coming into the mix your self-control needs to be turned up about 10 notches because when there is conflict it needs to be addressed outside the presence of your children and that's within your marriage and that needs to extend beyond right. the realms of marriage as well so that when there is a separation and there is co-parenting even though it may not have been an amicable separation you need to remember that dealing with your conflicts needs to happen outside of your children so when a new person is being entered um, or being put into this new Tala, position before a lot before of you, you go need to into think about. Right, Carla, just before you go into the new person, can you touch on there, conflict not being um, done in front of the children. What about bad talking the other yes. parents to the children? You, when oh. the access period, can you just touch on that before we, so we go in? We like to do that. Oh, your mother so nice. Sure. You know, right. Yes. 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 And um, I think that comes back to that whole self-control and you know i don't get me wrong because you know a lot of the time when we sit and we talk we talk about the ideal but then we live in the real right yes. so don't get me wrong okay the spouse that you have separated from may not be pulling their end they may not be doing what is right they may not be giving you the final and they have promised they may not be supporting as they have promised they, not be, they may not be picking up their kid as they have promised so there may be a lot of things that they are not doing that is right your job your position is not to point out all of these errors your children are very capable of seeing that for themselves and they are dealing with all of that emotion okay. for them they are dealing with that additional rejection that they may be feeling because you know they may be feeling rejected because of the separation thinking you know that it might be their fault and all of those things so they may be dealing with those feelings already so right. your self-control at this point as i said it needs to turn those notches need to be turned up because even though you feel to say these things it is not appropriate to say it to your children you have a friend call your friend you have a partner talk to your partner your child should not be at the receiving end of your anger or of your disdain towards That's their it. parent because at the end of the day you know whether That's parents right. are good or bad and don't get me wrong as adults sometimes we look at other adults and their parenting skills and their life skills and life choices and so on and we think to ourselves you know these kids are going to be so much better off without this parent and don't get me wrong sometimes that may be true but in the mind and in the true. life of a child even a very very terrible parent and i'm going to put terrible in quotes you know even that type of parent is worth everything to that child. They are their world. Yes, that's correct. Good parent, bad parent. They mean everything to that child. So as a parent, you do not want to further encourage that type of thinking and that type of emotion by bad talking and saying, you know, you're just like your father, you're, 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 you're so worthless, you're so whatever. You know, those are things that you really, really want to discourage. The world is going to break down our children enough. So within the realms of our home, we really want to build them up. We do not want to break them down. And by saying a lot of these yes. negative comments, that's exactly what we are doing. So you may need to vent. 
you may need to express you know some frustration or some hurt my point is your children should not be your go-to for that right um and then on the flip side we were talking about in terms of that introduction of a new person new right? party that's when correct. we are introducing yes. so if this you can share new... with us yes on that yes. aspect this yes so when we are introducing that new person we want to do that with as much control as is possible so i would want to discourage persons from bringing this new party into the picture just as pastor jeffrey said very early on now it is very possible that your marriage may have been dissolving over a period of time right and this person this new person may right. have been around for a period of time but i want to strongly suggest that mm. you hold off on these new um adding these new parameters to your situations because remember that when we go through a divorce that is a change and just like going through this whole COVID-19 experience we it is difficult for some of us because the changes are so rapid and we don't get a so time rapid. to that's adjust correct. to what is happening and that's what you need to do with your children you need to give your children time to adjust to this new life so this new life of divorce and separation, they need time to adjust. And you need to use your children as your thermometer. So how well have they adjusted? Do you think they are as settled as they were before your separation? You need to use them as your gauge for when you right. are actually going to introduce this new person. And if you're realizing that your children are not ready, then you need to wait because having children is is a very selfless act and you know sometimes we we really have to remove ourselves mm. and seek their best interest so going through your divorce From, i don't want to say that it is selfish but it is really something that we we think about in terms of how it's going to make my life better and by extension how it is going to make my child's life better but when you begin to introduce a new person, that new person is primarily for you, okay. the adult. So you want to use your children as a temperature. And in terms of the, the other party, okay. I think that needs to be an open line of communication. So when we're dealing with divorce, a lot of maturity needs to, to be taken into consideration. Because you are not living your life in a silo. You're living your life with you, your child your um ex your your previous spouse and now this new person so yes. as you're introducing this new person into the equation you want to talk you need to establish your terms right so do i tell you first when i'm introducing this person to our child do you want to be there when we're making that introduction do you want to talk to our child about this person that i am seeing but a lot a lot a lot a lot of communication needs to happen just like within marriage so you know we think that a lot of the factors right. that exist within marriage when we are divorced those factors disappear and that is not true so the same factors that, that it takes to maintain a good marriage it's the same factors it you know, takes to maintain a good after marriage life. All right. Um, very, very important points, Carla. You know, I have seen and and as an attorney myself, um, you know, when persons come to me and they, they ask, you know, how am I going to tell the children? And uh, I indicate to them that it's important that you sit the children down and as far as possible you have yourself yes. and your partner deliver the news because you really want to mitigate yes. any any immediate negative impact because one of the first things that children generally tend to think is what did i do like you know are you breaking up because of me is it my fault the self-blame and so even from yes. the onset of the once you recognize that the divorce 
is pending you want to have that conversation with the children guys you know mommy and daddy are getting a divorce but you want to reassure them as well yes. we love you all right you all are still very special to us and you will still have access to both of us so even upon the entrance yes. of a new party as well you want that to be done that um there's a mature conversation it calls for a certain yes. degree of maturity between the parties that you know i am yes. dating and yes. you know i we have been dating for a period of time and i would like to you know introduce them to the children you know um and and not be selfish about it because yes. if, if the party is somebody who you recognize um is not in any way going to uh, adversely affect the welfare of the children then you as the partner should not try to hinder the development of the relationship just to be spiteful you yes. follow are you with yes. me carla and you know right definitely. and so we want to, that i am definitely uh -huh. with you no i was just going to say that you know based on the different age levels as well you know different you would need to try different things so of course if you have a a teenager in your presence you know when you go through that divorce if you have divorced where there's a teenager it is you will have a different type of conversation with that with that child as opposed to if you have mm -hmm. that's correct. a child that is very young and you know by extension even even in terms of introducing this new party you want to be very responsible with that with, with introducing this new person into your home into your family because you know you want to make sure that you are very clear on on who this person is and what their values are you really want to avoid making very rash and That's hasty correct. decisions because you are hurt and because you want to move on very impulsive quickly. That's correct. yes and you definitely don't want to have that rebound relationship because that of course is just going to damage the children yes. more and more now i want us to explore um when the child's reaction to the new party is not really one that they warm up all right but we're going to go there just a while because we have two questions from the live right. um stream pastor jeffrey are you with us we have a, two questions actually directed to you pastor jeffrey the first is from uh to chichi i i really hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly odi and and <laughs> they are asking pastor what is the church's response to a divorced father or mother who refuses to co-parent and be a dad or mom to the children all right so i think the second part of the question was already answered by carla how does this have a negative impact on the children all right because as carla said the children definitely want access to both mommy and daddy they love mommy and daddy um equally and you know where their shortcomings they would see it they they if they if their eyes would eventually be opened and they would notice okay mommy or daddy are not pulling their weight as they should all right but how does the church pastor jeffrey respond to a divorced parent who is not cooperating with the parent who has custody pastor jeffrey can you share with us is the, what does the church offer in those circumstances pastor i think you're still on mute oh my pastor check check it again and make sure that uh you have unmuted the microphone Are you seeing it there in the microphone? <clears throat> no, we're not hearing you. We're hearing you before. Um, but while you check out your, your technical issues there, are you better? You are, It's on your screen there? All right. So while you're working on that, um, I would send you the next question so you could answer them both at the same time. Um, should a divorced couple get counseling after the divorce? All right, as they would have done prior to or during the, mar the marriage. All right, 
So, um, Pastor Jeffrey, I believe the advice that is coming to us there, right? All right, so he's still trying to work that out. So, Carla, I would direct a question to you then, as and then we'll hold on those um, two questions for Pastor Jeffrey. All right? So, Carla, what happens where... Before you go to the other the question. The child does not warm... Just uh-huh. No, I was going to say, before you go to the other question, in light of uh, um, a party seeking counseling after divorce, Rene, in an ideal world, that would be wonderful. That would be absolutely awesome. Because what a lot of people don't understand yes. is that for most people, entering into a divorce is uncharted territory. You have never gone through a divorce before. And when you look at no. other people who have gone through divorces, you usually see very difficult separations. People are very unhappy. People are, you know, lashing yes. out, being unreasonable. And you think that that is the way this is supposed to happen. That this is this is just how it is when you get divorced but yes. if you and your spouse can actually go for counseling go to a professional they would assist you with acquiring the necessary skills that you need to as you would say to mitigate this divorce appropriately so that you all can benefit so that the hurt yes. party can resolve their issues so that the one who did the hurting they can be viewed differently a different level of understanding can happen so you can understand how you got to this point you know so i think that that would be wonderful if if that can happen so that they can learn how to yes. go through and it is this available. new territory as best yes Particularly where there are children, Carla. Yes, it is I, actually I available. Is the court does offer co-parenting counseling. All right? And where they, the both parties, when they recognize they're having oh, issues. Yes. Because what the court is, is, is trying to admonish parties to understand is, even though your relationship failed, it does not auto automatically mean that your relationship with your children must fail. So you could continue to have a relationship right. for the sake of the children. And so they send you for counseling yes. for co-parenting skills to understand how to work it out and not allow your issues, your horizontal issues, to affect your vertical issues with your children. Yes. So they try very much to maintain a, a, a yes. healthy relationship for the sake of the children. And so there is co-parenting counseling available. Pastor Jeffries, that you are here. Yes. I so I didn't get the second All right, question. great. So, <laughs> not a problem. I'll pose them both to you again. All right. The first question is, what is the church's response to a divorced parent who refuses to co-parent and be a dad or a mom to the children? So I divorce you, well, I divorce the children too. How does the church assist in that instance? All right, then, Mr. Number One, that the pastor should seek to help to counsel this individual and let them know that the, the child is still their child. Many times parents take out their, their, their grudges and their anger and their revenge on the child by not taking care of the child and the child did nothing wrong. And 99% of the time it's not the child's fault. Right. You see, because if we should understand, the child that came into a family, is, it's, the child is half of the mother and half of the father. Therefore, they bear responsibility. Secondly, the, 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 the church is set up in such a way. Yeah. If one parent doesn't want to take their part of the responsibility in supporting the child financially and otherwise, have a system which will set up for that, which is the welfare system. 
This is one of the things that should also help each other. And of course, parents will also have friends in the church. In quotes, they are brothers and sisters in the church who can do more than their fair share of just looking on, but really giving advice. I must say that in every church, there is at least one person that an individual latches on to and keep as a very close friend. And that individual should not be biased when it comes to a child. They should be able to give sound advice, and I must say, not just sound advice, spiritual advice to allow and let that person know, that parent know, that they should support their child. Because in any event, let me say this, the reason why we find these days in our church or churches we have less marriages, it is because our young people sometimes they are looking at those many divorces. Because they have experiences and they are not seeing people who are divorced acting responsibly. So they are saying, I cannot get married because all these people are divorced. My peers and they haven't told me anything. They haven't sat down with me and explained this thing or tell me why or why not say to me. And sometimes parents believe, in quotes again, according to Kala, parents believe that children don't understand. So therefore, they don't explain things to children. And I want parents, if parents are listening and they're divorced, to pay themselves way back, even when they were eight years old, and ask themselves the question if they understood or if they didn't understand some of the things that they saw and some of the things that we have experienced. And I am telling you, they would say, yes, they understood, but nobody said anything to them. So parents at times yes. must put them in children's shoes so that they would understand the hurt and trauma that and they are suffering Thank you so much. If I could, Renee. Thank you so much, Pastor Jeffrey. Yes, Carla, go ahead. I mm -hmm. just want to... Just coming up from what Pastor Jeffrey was saying, that is a Caribbean thing. Talking to our children. In the Caribbean, we do not do a lot of constructive talking. So we do a lot of tear-down talking to our children. So growing up, you would usually hear... Um, Adults, when they talk to children, they are usually talking to them about their flaws. So we will tell our children about, you know, oh, you're so thin, or you're right. so fat, or your head's so big, or, you know, that's usually the kind of conversation. You hardly hear mm -hmm. warm language. So you hardly hear, oh, you are so beautiful. I love you so much. You know, we hardly hear a lot of that. Right. And that extends into... Um, us not talking to our children about pertinent everyday situation. So we still have females who are yes. becoming women through menstruation and a parent has not had a conversation with them. We still have a lot of these things happening and you know I, right. I see that I, I thank God for our church in that regard because our church really helps to fill that gap in terms of talking through a lot of these things so That's that you correct. became aware of how valued you are, of how precious you are, and these things. But a lot of this needs to happen within our homes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carla. Guys, our time is fast spent. And um, I want to raise just two quick things that I, uh, Pastor Jeffrey's point would have highlighted there. Um, firstly, the fact that not only does a divorce affect the children of the family but where the couple has been um regular members attending a church it affects the children of the church because you know you belong to a circle a group of friends and so even now like when those friends come over sometimes it's even devastating i i mean I, as a single person i know that there are a few marriages at my local church that i would i look up to 
and I was like, oh, that, they have such a lovely marriage. And, you know, God, I wouldn't mind being blessed with such a marriage. You know, not that they don't have their issues, but they really try to model what they believe to be a godly marriage. And I know I would be devastated if those marriages were to, to go on the rocks. You follow? So you would have highlighted there that there's a group of friends um that the children would associate with and and you know they are looking on as well to see what's happening in adult kingdom so to speak and to model what they are seeing so we really mm -hmm. want to make sure that we paint a proper picture so that when they come behind us they would find us faithful all right so that was the first thing that um pastor jeffrey's point highlighted there and then what we want to showcase as well or, or emphasize is that even where a parent may not be pulling your weight because sometimes i mean in my line of work the reality is sometimes i am surprised at the responses of seven day adventist couples who go through a divorce because their response is no different from the person who is non-sda and so i'm surprised sometimes and uh, it's important though that we highlight to our children that daddy or mommy's failures in no way diminishes God's love for them and and I think it's important because a parent's love or, or for the child a parent's love gives them a picture of what God's love is like and so God's where love. a parent now has been removed from and they have chosen no longer to part, actively participate in the life of a child that could also skew the child's concept of god's love towards him or her and it's important that be that medium to reassure this child that absolutely nothing not even your parents being divorced can separate you from god's love for you so i really want to emphasize that um all right guys so we're wrapping up at this time i want to invite um Daryl to bring our lest we forget questions. I believe the questions. Um, there was a bit of an issue a bit earlier. So we would encourage Daryl at this time to bring those issues and then we'd come in to answer our final two questions and to make our closing yeah. remarks. All right. Um, Carla, don't forget we have that lingering question about what happens if the child does not warm up to the new party. How do the parent, how does the parent who is dating oh, yeah. treat with that? All right, so we want to explore that when we come back from our Lest We Forget feature. Here we go. Okay, our first question this evening. What two institutions were initiated by God in the Garden of Eden? What two institutions were initiated by God in the Garden of Eden? Question number two. What book written by Ellen White gives comprehensive advice about marriage? What book written by Ellen White gives comprehensive advice about marriage? And some of you may realize this is a repeat question for regular viewers. And question number three, what important event did God use marriage to portray? What important event did God use marriage to portray? So remember to post your answers in the live chat. Renee, back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daryl. I didn't even realize that we had not um, brought the questions up on screen. I apologize, guys, but now you have them. So please feel free to leave your answers in the live chat that's below the video. So we have a question here. What happens... Um, so I'm going to leave this question for Pastor Jeffrey to answer. But Carla, I'm coming back to you now with that question on what can the parent do if the children don't be. But Pastor Jeffrey, um, after Carla, I would like for you to answer a question posed by Alison Bryce. What authority does the church have with respect to treating a negligent parent in a divorce situation after friends the pastor or the elder would have counseled that person so um can that person be subject to church discipline i suppose that's what he's asking does the church have any authority to do that so pastor jeffrey that's a hard question and ellison bryce usually asks 
hard questions I've spoken to him about yes. it, you know, but he still does it. So <laughs> we'll leave that for you because that's under your forte. But let's take, I'll leave you to, I'll give you some time to think yes. about it. Let's take Carla's answer. What can a parent do if the child doesn't warm up to the new party? Well, I would want to tell that parent, first things first, just move slowly. Take your time. Um, children right. are delicate creatures and, you know, children interpret the world very differently. So, of course, if it's a very young child, they may be thinking in their mind, well, if they like this new person, this new person might be their new daddy or their new mommy. And that means if I like this person or I love this person, I may not love or like my, my real parent, my biological parent. So, you know, they may be having those type of thoughts. So I want mm -hmm. to encourage you, first things first, move slowly. Do not at all be offended. Right? right? Because uh, children take time. If this is uh, someone that yes. really wants to be a part of your family and is really interested in your well-being, they will facilitate mm -hmm. that, that slow movement. Then, just as we were saying before, you want to have the lines of communication open. So you don't just want to be angry and irritated. And uh, I, I, this is a quick plug-in for, for parenting in general. When your child does something that you do not like or is saying something to you that may not be appropriate, you want to try to avoid as much as possible very big emotions. And don't get me wrong, I am very guilty of this at times because sometimes your kids say things to you or they do something to you and you have a, a very quick emotional response but you want to avoid those big emotions because that breaks down the avenue for communication yes yes so you really want to talk to your child find out you know why 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 do you think that this is, this is not a good person or or what is it about this person that you do not like or and a lot of the time you may realize that it has nothing to do with that person that most of the time it has to do with the event which would have mm -hmm. been that divorce or that separation. Sometimes it may have to do with the child and how the child feels. So I would want to say, go slowly with it. Talk to your child about it. Um, and eventually, um, ease it in slowly. So use a lot of different events. You know, try not to do it with, with just like events with just the three of you. But you may want to bring them to a family gathering because when your child sees acceptance from others, they may be more likely to be open and acceptable because remember, modeling for children okay. is very important. So when they recognize that, okay, no, this person, right. auntie can like this person and auntie still liked my parent, they may be able to come to terms and realize that, okay, no, it's okay for me to like this person as well and still like my parent also. Mm -hmm. You know, you may want to also communicate to your child the right. benefits this person of is not having, replacing you know, your two mom dads or, dad. or two moms or... Yes, right. yes. Yeah. You're, you're gaining a friend. You're so gaining that, somebody else who is interested in your welfare. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank yes. you so very much. Pastor yes. Jeffrey, are you ready you. to answer that difficult Definitely. Unmute that mic, Pasta. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead. Yes, we are. Right. So, uh, let, me get, let me get straight to the point. If this not taking care of a child, it technical, not technically, but it is what you call abandonment. You have abandoned your child because without taking care of your child, no one won't really do that for you. That's your responsibility. When you went to work on the aisle, you said for better or for worse or sickness or in health and death was part, you have parted, but part of you right. is here with you. You have to take care of your child. And this demands, I would say, some sort of discipline. 
after the church have spoken, after the pastor have spoken, after the elders have spoken, after your friends would have tried to encourage you, Bye. you still need to fix taking care of your child. This means that some discipline should be meted out. And I guess you know why sometimes discipline is not meted out in these things. It's because um, people say that they right. are already going through a tough time with the divorce. There are sometimes people just do things to get out of a relationship. Let me say to you, marriage is not easy, but it is good. It is the best thing. And when it comes to marriage, one should really pray a lot before one getting marriage is not for children. Marriage right. is for adults. Several adults. Once an individual is responsible, they will take the time out to care for that child. The child did do nothing wrong. The child was not the issue in the marriage. Therefore, the child is grooming, loving, praying for caring for so that they can grow not to be a hateful person but a loving person and if you community you figure out why so many children are hurting it is because of what was meted out to them by some parent abandoning them every other child they are seen with a lunch kit and a school bag Yes, hearing children speaking good things about their parents, taking them out, and about them to buy their school uniform and other things. And they don't have that type of relationship. This is that. And let me just say as a place here, Wendy, that it's important for friends uh -huh. to take of their sons and to groom them to be loving, caring men. Fathers should read and spend time with their children. No matter what their children are at, walk with them, speak to them, explain life to them, and let them know that God as a father loves them and set an example. And let me say, mothers ought to take care of their daughters Amen. and train them around. Help them to understand the rudiments of life so they would caught up in marrying a guy because of his physique because of the type of job he might have, he has. But this guy needs, first of all, a spiritual person. A person who loves God more than anyone else. These things are important. And when individuals see these things, Amen. Well, we are children. Why? Because once God shows you love, you ought to in turn show love to others. These children are younger members of the family of God and they will keep to be patient and to be taken care of. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much, Pastor Jeffrey. That was really a nice, succinct response there. And I want to add to what you've said, Pastor Jeffrey. Um, biblical, uh, First Timothy 5, 8. Biblical support for what you have said. Uh, First Timothy 5, 8. And in response to the same question by Elderson Bryce, if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Okay. Amen. Right. So even the Bible, okay. the Bible denounces really and uses very strong language to denounce not providing for your your children for your family all right so we want to just highlight that as well you are worse than an infidel that's somebody who's not even of the fold all right so thank you very much for clarifying pastor yes it is possible for such a person to face church discipline uh color divorce broken homes broken hearts uh any final closing comments from on your end yes um just three quick things as as um we wrap it up um coming from what pastor jeffrey was saying you know he was saying dads train your sons mothers train your daughters but we want to remember that dads have a very important role to play in the lives of their daughters as well and mothers in the lives of their sons so it does not matter what is happening um whether you are 
in a in a marriage or in a separation or a divorce you want to remember that your rules are pivotal mothers cannot father and fathers cannot mother yes you need both parents because they both contribute right. invaluably to the lives of their children then as you go through a divorce you always want to remember to Amen. empower your children um, children deal with a lot of doubt they deal with a lot of changes as a result of divorce so you want to empower them you want to try your best to teach them good coping strategies and most of all create an environment where your children feel safe and secure because once they do not have yes. that they cannot adapt Amen. to the challenges of life very well so as a parent it does not matter um, whether you are within the confines of a marriage or um, you have gone through a divorce, try your very best to make sure that your children feel safe and secure when they are with you, as I said, in, the, um, in a marriage or, you know, you as, as an independent body after you have an experience, after, exactly. after you have experienced a divorce, try to set that environment for them. Yes. Thank you so very much, Carla. All right, guys, so we want to give you our Lest We Forget. We've had so much information shared with us this evening, and we really trust that you have taken it in. Please share it with persons who you know that can benefit from what has been shared by Pastor Jeffrey, uh, Sister Carla, Sister Aviana. We know we had some technical difficulties, but thank you very much, guys, for joining us. And we, we think that what you have shared with us this evening is invaluable. And we're very, very grateful. And of course, I trust that you can make yourself available for us in the future. We'll definitely be calling upon you uh, because we know there are many other areas that you might be able to share with us on. So thank you so very much. Uh, Daryl, I want to hand over to you at this time with our lest we forget answers i see many uh responses under our live chat and so daryl let's see did they get those answers correctly daryl over to you lest we forget answers okay thank you Rene. and well question one just to remind was what two institutions were initiated by god in the garden of eden and that answer is marriage, the institution of marriage, and that of the Sabbath. And you can reference Genesis 1, 26 to 28, and Genesis 2, 2 and 3. The second question, as mentioned, this was a repeat question. So, what book written by Ellen White gives comprehensive advice about marriage? And that answer is The Adventist Home. Right, The Adventist Home. And finally, number three. What important event yes. did God use marriage to portray? And some of you would have identified, yes, that God uses marriage to portray the relationship of him with his church. But in terms of the important event, we referred to the second coming. All right, the second coming. And of course, you can reference right. Matthew 25, that parable of the ten virgins. Um, and you would see that there. So thank you for all of those who participated. Most of you did extremely well. Over to you, Renny. <laughs> thank you so very much, Daryl. All right. So we have our Lest We Forget answers there. I trust that we got the Adventist home right, guys. That came in Divorce Part 1. And so we said, huh, let's quiz them and see. You know, you always say, uh, do the teachers bring back what, we, what they taught? Well, yes, we did. We brought it back tonight. All right. So thank you so very much for participating in our Lest We Forget segment. And for being with us tonight, everyone, I know that we had some technical issues. It's our first time doing ay online totally through remote connections and it's due to of course our quarantine um so we, we did anticipate some issues arising and we thank you so much for your patience and for all of you who stayed with us until the end our topic for next month first friday night in may from the basket to the bmw where does my tithe go all right so i know some of you all are wondering you know from the basket to the bmw where does my tithe go 
some of you all, you know, you see, you put your offering and you see the pastor come in with the fancy vehicle and, you know, all the dapper suits, etc. So we'll be exploring that, um, how the Adventist system, as opposed to other churches, treats with tithes and offerings. And of course, that's very pertinent now, given that we can't just drop our offerings and our tithes in a basket as we do every Sabbath. But we want to encourage you, of course, still to hold on to your tithe, be faithful even though you cannot proffer it to the church at this time but please don't spend it that's your one tenth that you've taken out and put to God and you know whenever the opportunity arises you want to make sure that it's there to give it back to God all right so that's our topic for next month where does our tithe go and I want to borrow the words from a, a song that we all know well as we we close this evening and it says I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind you, divorced parties, how you used to be. Guys, it does not all have to be acrimonious, all right? And even though your home may have been broken, Jesus can heal a broken heart so give your heart to Jesus we're so thankful for all of you us to join us here this evening and I want to leave you with these thoughts and these words and I want to invite Pastor Jeffrey at this time to give us our closing prayer Pastor Jeffrey remember to unmute the mic all right yes and Father in heaven thank you this Sabbath day for your blessings towards us thank you for Remy and for Carla who are here and for the others and for even Darren as we depart, we bring in your presence divorce parties. They are hurting. Some of them may have gone and remarried, but we know for a fact that you love them. Continue to help them, O oh Lord, to recognize that they need to trust you even where they cannot choose you. We bring in thy presence children who are caught in the middle of divorce that you may somehow allow these parents to be able to generate a sort of understanding and love for these children that they will not go astray but that through all the difficulties they will see you high and lift them up and they will continue to trust you bless them in a special way and help us as a church and as a people to love our young people to love our families to love our brethren who are having so much challenges and can give them good guidance and some counsel. Into your hands I commit us. Bless your people in the world. Bless South Carolina Conference and all those who tune in. We will continue to guide and work and help us to continue to have a pleasant Sabbath. For we ask it in Jesus' name of thanksgiving. Yes. Amen and amen. Thank you so very much, guys. It was wonderful being with you, and we'll see you next month. From the basket to the BMW, where does my tithe go? Bye bye. God bless you.